hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is tessie and today we'll be learning how to sew a keyhole neckline so i folded my pattern paper into two and i'll be chalking out my measurements on the starting point i took my shoulder divided by two i came down to my armhole line boss point on the boss and my waistline so i went ahead to connect the lines after which I indicated my chest line, bust point, on the bust and waist. So on the starting point, I'll be taking my neck measurement. So I'm taking 3 by 3 inches. So I went ahead to curve out my neck line. And I'll be going down on the shoulder by 1 inches for my shoulder slope. So I'll connect that 1 inches to the neck measurement. So what I have left on my armhole line is 8 inches, divided by 2 is 4. So I chalked down 4 inches and I came in by 0 0.5 inches. So I'll go ahead to cover out my armhole using my curl ruler. So from my shoulder line, I chalked down 7 inches for my yoke. So you determine where you want your yoke. So 7 inches and I made a straight line. So this part will be my yoke. So my nipple to nipple divided by 2 is 4 inches, I added half an inch so I chalk 4.5 and I ruled a straight line down. So now on the bust point I'll come down by half an inch and I'll go up by half an inch to eliminate pointiness on the bust. So on my under bust line I'll come in by 1.5, I'll also come in here by 1.5. So I'll go ahead to connect my line to the waist line. So I will connect my line to the half an inch I came down at at the boss point. Just watch what I'm doing closely. So on my chest line, I will be coming in by one inch on both sides. So I'll be connecting my line to the half inch I came up at. Just watch what I'm doing. So after doing this, you can go ahead to blend your lines to the boss point, but I just prefer leaving mine this way. So now I'll go ahead to place back the dart and my measurements. So on the chest line, I placed my boss divided by 4 inches. And I placed back the dart I took and I added my 2 inches sewing allowance. On the underboss, I placed my underboss measurement divided by 4, placed back the dart I took and added my 2 inches sewing allowance. I also did the same thing for the waist line. So what I'll be doing now is connecting my points together. So after connecting my points, this is what I have as you can see. So on the center front for my sweetheart's neckline you determine where you want your neckline to start from so i'll be chalking 1.5 inches that is how deep i want my neckline so i'll go ahead to just curve out my sweetheart neck so now for the other part i will blend it into the armhole just watch what i'm doing to blend it into the armhole so i went ahead to just blend the yoke part so we are done with the front part and I just take out the dart I'll be taking off. After which I went ahead to cut out my pattern. So I'll be cutting out my patterns. So as you can see this is what it looks like. So I indicated my bust point on the bust and way so you get to understand. So I'll take this part out. So for my keyhole neckline, you determine how deep you want your keyhole to be after your neck. So for my neck measurement, I chalked out 3 inches and you can slant in any way you choose to. So I'm just slanting a bit. Then you slant it to the armhole just like this. Go ahead to cut out your yoke. So this is what my keyhole would look like. 
so i went ahead to cut out the neck area and the shoulders look so this is what the front part looks like so i'll be cutting out the back pattern so i folded my fabric into two and chuck out two inches for my zip allowance so after my zip allowance i chucked out my shoulder divided by two and I, then i came down to my armhole line and my waist line so i went ahead to connect the lines after which i indicated my chest line and my waist line on the starting point after my zip allowance i came in by three inches and i came down by two inches so i went ahead to cover out my neckline so on the shoulder line i'll be coming down by one inches for my shoulder slope so you go ahead to connect it to your neckline so i'll be covering out my armhole so i just came out using my curve ruler to connect my armhole for my dad my nipple to nipple divided by two plus half an inch i chopped it at that waistline so i connected the line to the chest line so on that waistline i'll be coming in by half an inch on both sides so i'll connect those half an inch to the chest line so i'll be placing my measurement so on the chest line i placed my bust measurement plus two inches sewing allowance on the waistline i placed my waist measurement placed back the dart i took added my two inches sewing allowance so i went ahead to connect my lines so i just blended that ammo curve at the chest line on the zip line i don't want it bulging so what i did was I came in by half an inch and I just slanted it up so you come in by half an inch and you just slant it all the way up if you don't want a keyhole on yours you can go ahead to cut out but I'll be adding a keyhole to the back pattern so I came in by four and I came up by four inches so I'll go ahead to just curve it to that four inches i came down at so just watch what i'm doing so i'll be attaching like buttons on this part so i'll go ahead now to cut out my patterns So after cutting this is what the back looks like so i went ahead to notch the zip allowance area so this is what it looks like so i'll be cutting out my patterns after cutting out my patterns this is what my pattern looks like i added interfacing and i cut out the lining as well so what i'll be doing now is joining my front part together so I'll place the side on the center front and I will sew half an inch on it. I'll do the same thing for the other parts. After sewing and ironing, this is what it looks like. I'll be dropping a tutorial on how to perfectly pad your bustier. So this is what it looks like with the lining. So what I'll be doing next is joining my yoke with the lining. So for my front part, I placed my lining on it and I will run a stitch at the down part and also on the neck line. After running a stitch, you can see what it looks like after ironing. So what I'll be doing next is placing my yoke at the front part. So I folded my yoke into two and on that middle part of the yoke, I place the middle part of my yoke on my fabric, on the middle part of my fabric, just like this. So I'll go ahead to pin it down. After pinning it down, I placed my lining on the main fabric. 
So after placing it properly, I went ahead to pin the middle part. For a beginner, you can go ahead to pin it down and stitch. After pinning and stitching, this is what my front part looks like. As you can see, my yoke is sitting down properly. So I'll go ahead to iron it proper. So for my back pattern, I'll be working on the yoke. So for the yoke, I went ahead to place my main fabric and the lining together just like this. And I'll be running a stitch on it. And for the darts, I folded it into two and I will take my darts. So after stitching and ironing, this is what it looks like as you can see my darts. So I'll be placing my yoke on that dart line. From that dart line, I placed my yoke. So I'll go ahead to place the lining on it. So I'll run a stitch on them. So after stitching, this is what it looks like. I close the zip allowance for now. So this is what the back pattern looks like after ironing. And I placed the front part on the back and I went ahead to stitch them. And this is the final result. You can see this is how it looks. Hope this video was helpful and i'll be dropping a tutorial on how to perfectly pad your bustier you don't want to miss that thank you guys for watching love you all please kindly subscribe to my channel god bless you bye